Carry on. So we're going to look at yoga and naturopathy uh, in preparation for conception. So first looking at the yogic conception or yogic view of conception. So at that time when we are trying to conceive that moment, the awareness should be complete. So we want to be focusing only on that act. We want to be focusing on the child that we want to be having. We want to have pure intentions, so not having any kind of lust or desirous thoughts, but just pure love should be there. And we also want to be thinking about the qualities that we want to have in our baby. So all those kind of thoughts should be there right at that act for conception. And preparation of the parents is really important in preparation for conception if we want to have that positive soul and if we want to prepare ourselves spiritually so that our child is also going to be more on that spiritual path and to have that more highly evolved soul. So the thoughts that one is having at that time of conception are going to be molding the consciousness and disposition of the baby. So looking at preparation for conception, so one should prepare at least three months before and it shouldn't only be the woman, it should also be the man and uh, I just tell you from my experience, we know my background is in naturopathy and I used to work at a natural fertility centre and we always looked at both the man and the woman because it's half half. Okay, yes, the woman is going to be carrying the child, but also to make sure that the health is going to be there and to have that good conception, both the woman and the man need to be working on themselves, making sure that they're as healthy as possible. And you want to have at least three months so that you can make sure that you're really, really healthy and strong. Of course, it can take even longer than, than three months um, to do preparation. It depends on how healthy um, one is to begin with. So the ovulation is going to occur when the egg is released from the ovaries, makes its way uh, through the fallopian tube to the uterus, and a few days prior to ovulation, during ovulation, and up to three days after are the most fertile periods. So it is important to know when the woman is fertile, and there's lots of ways that we can check that. Um, but first point here is yoga can help us to become more intuitive so we understand when we're ovulating. Uh, so it's important to chart one cycle. Um, there's lots of other things that we can be charting to check. So one is the awareness of the mucus changes. Um, so particularly during the time of ovulation, there's going to be more mucus, it's going to be more um, thickish, more white, sticky, so that is more of the fertile time. Uh, the temperature changes can be there. Um, also linking uh, one cycle with the lunar cycle can help one understand because often the ovulation is going to be uh, either at the new moon or the full moon. So those things can also help to understand when one is ovulating. Uh, and then of course, there are lots of problems can be there in conception related to stress or PCOD, polycystic ovarian disease, fibroids, there's lots of other things too. Um, and that's why you see that infertility can be up to 15%. One in six can have problems trying to conceive, which is actually really, really high. And you can't say that it's only the woman either. It's 50-50. They say 40% woman, 40% uh, man and 20% unknown. So basically it's 50-50. So both the woman and the man need to be working on themselves to become as healthy as possible. And you see this last point here, infertility can be more stressful than divorce or loss of a parent. So it's massive. So it's really important that um, the couple is practicing yoga to try to keep them well balanced and to keep uh, them mentally stable as well because of those high levels of stress. So there's a few things that can help for prevention of miscarriage. Of course, there are substances which are very toxic um, to the embryo and most of those things you wouldn't really 
be ingesting things like um, paints and glue and stuff, but it can happen. So we will go through it. So different types of drugs. Um, so of course, those are things like recreational drugs, but also many, many pharmaceutical drugs also can have really serious effects um, on a child in utero. So it's really important that if one is taking any kind of pharmaceutical drugs, they have an understanding of the side effects. Um, they, they need to check all the packaging that comes. If, you're, if one is in India, that doesn't come with all those, you know, papers about all the side effects. So one needs to check with their doctor. Um, there's also many kind of helplines that are there to call and check uh, if the medicines one is taking can have a negative effect. So it's really, really important to minimize those kind of substances that are coming inside. Um, then here, okay, I'll put paints. We're not going to ingest um, paint on purpose, but it often happens that uh, a woman becomes pregnant and she's planning or renovating in the house. And if it's an old house and she's um, sanding and she's going to be repainting, then, you know, those particles, especially, you know, the old paints can have lead in them. So if she's uh, inhaling those fumes or those small particles, then it can have a negative effect. Um, certain glues, um, caffeine, so high levels of caffeine, if she's having a lot of a lot of coffee or a lot of tea, um, it's going to have a negative effect. Things, of course, like green potato, deli meats, um, can have a lot of heavy metals inside. Um, heavy metals can be in many other things too. Nicotine, so uh, cigarettes is well known now that um, a woman should never be smoking during her pregnancy. And if she's planning to become pregnant, she um, should be quitting. It can take quite some time to, to quit nicotine. So it's uh, important that she tries to do that before becoming pregnant. Um, and then different types of chemicals can have an effect as well in uh, impacting on miscarriage and certain hormonal pills. So basically we're trying to um, be as clean as possible. Uh, another thing is giving time to the body between pregnancies. So for some women, they may have a miscarriage and it's of course very, it's very traumatic and it takes time to recover from. But for some women, their way that they feel to recover is to try and conceive again. But their body can take time before it's actually ready to try to conceive. So this can lead to, again, another miscarriage. So for some women, they might have miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage when really their body just needs a bit of time to, to come back to its um, regular balanced state before it's ready to have another baby. And it can also be if um, someone has had a baby recently and they want to try to conceive again because, you know, some, some people want to have children very, very close together, um, but the body also needs time before it can... Uh, have another healthy pregnancy again. So that's another thing to think about. Of course, we want to have a really good diet. We want to have enough uh, of our vitamins, A, B, C, D, E, <laughs> uh, minerals, essential fatty acids, all those things are essential. So a good whole food diet um, and a balanced yoga practice, which has a focus on strengthening of the reproductive system. So looking at problems conceiving, you see a big long list here, but all of these things can have an impact. Of course, the top one is stress. Stress and anxiety are huge um, factors in why some couples are not able to conceive. Obesity is one that is growing and obesity can also be linked to many other problems of the reproductive system. We know that uh, a lot of women who are very overweight do have um, polycystic ovarian disease. Um, it's really, really common these days. Then we have things like a disturbed lifestyle. So this can cover all sorts of things, but especially um, if one does a lot of shift work, if one, you know, if one is uh, traveling a lot, for work, if one doesn't have like a, a regular routine, um, this can create problems. So often a woman who is having a very disturbed lifestyle, their cycle is also very irregular. 
then uh, if one has a very poor diet, disturbed relationships. So mostly this is going to be the relationship between the woman and the man, but it can be other relationships that are creating stress and anxiety. Uh, it can also be the relationship that the woman has with her mother, which can be impacting too. Then, of course, we've got different hormonal imbalances, which can be from all sorts of problems, weakness in the pelvis, um, having low prana, the relationship that one has with the menstrual cycle, so particularly the lack of awareness. So if a woman doesn't really um, understand her cycle, she doesn't know when she's fertile or anything like that, then it's definitely going to be much harder for her. Um, any kind of toxicity that's there in the body, um, drugs like we were talking, low immunity, and of course many disorders of the reproductive system can lead to problems of infertility. So the yoga practices that we want to be doing of course, uh, asanas, pranayam, the breathing, different cleansing techniques, bandhas, mudras, meditation, mantras, lifestyle and diet. So we'll go through all of these in a little bit more. But first we want to look at the way we want to treat. So what do we want to focus on when we're looking at the yogic perspective of, of what should be done? So of course, reducing stress and anxiety is the most important one. Then we want to balance the emotions. So if she's open to, you know, talking about her feelings what's going on for her what is she feeling frustrated about is, is she angry does she have some kind of fear is there any guilt so there's a lot of things that we can be doing to help her to balance the emotions whether it's meditation whether it's um, mantras chanting of om um, yoga nidras all sorts of things pranayam that will all help with the emotions then improving circulation and prana to the pelvic region and the pituitary uh, so redistribution and balance of the prana. So a lot of practices to help with that. Balancing of the hormones, removing pelvic congestion, correction of the position of the uterus. So sometimes the position is quite uh, retroverted, um, which can create more of a problem because it's hard for the sperm to actually get in to the uterus. So there are things that can help for that. Then employing more of a yogic lifestyle, so having that yogic routine, um, having particular time for getting up, going to bed, doing one's yoga practices, um, eating, all of this um, is really important. And then increasing awareness of the body and mind, so particularly related to the menstrual cycle. So understanding how um, one is feeling on each day of the cycle will help. And the last point here, acceptance of one's femininity is also important because for many women, they don't want to think about cycles. They don't want to think about menstruation. They don't want to think about reproductive system and they're not really in touch with their body. So it's important that they start to accept themselves as women and all of the joy and things related to being a woman. So looking from a perspective of chakras, what kind of chakras we'd want to be focusing on? Well, it will depend on what the problems are. And if we're just doing practices to balance the whole body, then we can look at all of them. So looking at uh, adnia, so the effect, the third eye, so that will have an effect on the pituitary gland. So thinking of practices related to adnia, then we've got vishuddhi, the throat. So looking at voice and expression. So, you know, for some women, they might be holding things in. So they need to work on that expression there. And of course, remembering we're looking at conception. So we need to also look at the man's point of view um, for all of these things. Uh, Vishuddhi, yeah, so we've talked on Vishuddhi, Anahat. So looking on the aspect of heart, acceptance, love, love for oneself, love for others. Um, a lot of People do hold on to their emotions and they feel constriction in the chest. So working on anahat can really help to release that. Then looking at manipur, so helping to improve and balance the energies um, and also the effect is there of the adrenals. So how to deal with stress um, is really important. So manipur is very essential in balancing of our energy. Um, and then Swadishtan. So Swadishtan is going to be um, looking at the reproductive system along with Muladhar. 
but also looking at desires, inhib inhibitions, um, things that one has been holding on to. So making sure that they're, the couple are very comfortable within um, themselves and within each other. And yeah, moving on to Muladhar, so that is governing of the reproductive system and our primal energy source. So if we want to look at the asanas, we want asanas that are going to be strengthening and toning the reproductive system and the abdominal pelvic area. We want them to increase prana. We want asanas that will help to balance the emotions as well as balancing the hormonal secretions. So we do need to look at asanas that affect the pituitary, but also the thyroid, the reproductive organs and the adrenals and to improve circulation of blood, nutrients, and removal of impure blood and toxins. So what kind of yogic movements? Well, Surya Namaskar is um, a classic practice which can help to balance the hormones. The Shakti Bandhas are another series which can be very helpful and very specific for um, preconception. Um, many of them we also use a lot in pregnancy yoga or for any kind of women's work. The Shakti Bandhas are a class as per Swami Satinanda under Padmukdasan series 3. So basically those all these Shakti Bandhas are working on opening of the pelvis and strengthening of the spine and especially to remove energy blockages. So um, any kind of menstrual issues the Shakti Bandhas can be helpful for. So we're going to be going through them in prenatal uh, part, but things like pulling the rope, the dynamic spinal twist, Chucky Chalan, the rowing the boat, the chopping of the wood, <laughs> Namaskarasan, the, the wind release pose, Vayanishkasan, um, the crow walk and the abdominal stretching. So there's lots of different ones there. Then we've got the movement Shashank Bhujangasan, so going from child to cobra and back again, so that's a dynamic movement. We've got Druta Halasan, which is again another dynamic movement from the plow to the forward bend and back. And we've also got Uttanasana, which is the squatting and rising. So all of those can have an effect uh, on the body. Then if we look at the asanas, so things like Sarangasan, the shoulder stand, or Viparikkani, the inverted pose. So they strengthen the uterus and the ligaments around. Um, yeah, I've written especially after childbirth. So uh, this is just something to learn for after the conception. But we'll talk a lot more about that in the postnatal part. Um, then if there's any kind of irregularities to prevent pain, obviously we don't do this during menstruation but the rest of the month is okay. Uh, to give drainage to the reproductive system and also strong effect on the pituitary gland. We've got Nalkasan, the boat, so um, particularly the supine Nalkasan. Uh, so this is helpful for strengthening the ligaments around the uterus. Chakrasan is having a nice effect on the hormones. Shishasan headstand is having a nice effect on pituitary. Bhujangasan is having an effect on reproductive balance, basically all your classic asanas are going to be having a nice effect on the reproductive system because if you think about all classic asanas, they're focusing on those internal organs. So we've got things like Ardha Matsandrasan, the butterfly pose, we've got Halasan, the plow pose, Kandarasan, the bridge pose, um, Matsyasan, the fish pose, Shalabhasan, the locust, Dhanurasan, the bow pose, Pashimottanasan, the full forward bend. So all of those are having that effect on the pelvis and on the abdominal organs. We've got a few more here. So we've got Supta Vajrasan, or the Thunderbolt in Supine, or Vajra Matsyasan, another version, and Ushtrasan, the camel, which is quite strong on the pelvis. So they're the main ones. And I've got another list of some others that you can look at. Ardha Chakrasan, the half wheel, Uttanpad Chakrasan, which is the leg movement too, the, so rotating the leg, laying in supine, Ashwini Mudra, which is the horse's gesture, Akarana Danyurasan, which is the sitting bow pose, um, bow and arrow pose, Sankatasan, the difficult pose, Garudasan, the eagle pose, Paravata Trikonasan, the inverted triangle pose, Virasan Warrior, Uttanpadasan, the raised leg pose, Patangasan, the kite pose 
and Sid Asan, the perfect pose, or Sid Dayoni Asan. So there's many different types of asanas that we can be including in our class. Now looking at pranayam. So we have bastrika, the bellows breath. So this is especially helpful for detoxification um, and to increase energy levels. Obviously we don't do it during menstruation because it's a very heating practice, but the rest of the cycle we can do it. Then we have ujjayi, the tranquilizing breath, which is very helpful for stress and anxiety. We've got Nadi Shudan, the alternate nostril breathing. So this can help to um, balance the emotions, balance the mind and clear the blockages of prana. Of course, we're using it for stress and anxiety. Brahmari, the humming bee breath. So again, stress and anxiety, very, very healing uh, qualities are there. And then we've got the cooling breath, Shitali and Sitkai. So obviously the effect of there is cooling. So those... Um, people who have additional heat. Sometimes it can be a problem that a woman is having uh, very high levels of pitta heat in her body. So this can be helpful for her then. Um, but also this cooling breath has a nice calming effect. Then looking at cleansing techniques. So neti is a practice used for relief, relieving stress. Vaman uh, or kunju is very helpful for removal of emotional disturbances. So for those people who are holding on a lot of stuff, um, this can be really helpful for releasing that. So it can be quite emotional for them to do vomit, but it's very helpful. Um, also, if there's a lot of anger, if there's a lot of pitta, um, vomit can be really, really good for that. Then we've got Kapabhati. So Kapabhati can help to release the emotions and cleanse the mind um, and also give more energy to the body. And then we have Agni Sandoti. So that can help to increase the prana, increase the energy and tone all of the pelvic organs. If we move on to Bandhas, so we've got Mula Bandha. Mula Bandha is going to help remove congestion, tone the pelvic floor, um, increase the energy and the prana and help to control like the sexual urges. If we look at Udiyan Bandha, the abdominal lock, so again that also tones the pelvic region but also the abdominal uh, organs, the reproductive system and does increase energy as well. Jalanda Bandha, the throat lock, is going to have that effect on the thyroid. So it's also really important that the thyroid is healthy and also for a balance of metabolism. And then we have kumbak with the three bandhas. So if, if one is practicing that, that's going to help to balance the prana in the body. It's going to give tranquility um, on all levels. So especially on the mind, it's very helpful for, for stress. Um, it gives a lot of calmness. And then, of course, the effect on the endocrine system too. Then we've got things like meditation and mantras. So Mahamrutunji mantra is having that really healing um, effect and it can help to remove kind of obstacles in one's path. So it's good to do a lot of Mahamrutunji. Um, obviously, you know, uh, 11 rounds is nice, but it's also good to do longer periods. So if one has a mala, one can do uh, jap, japa with it. So 108 um, chance of Mahamrutunji is going to be really, really good. And that can easily be done mentally as well as out loud. So especially if one doesn't have as much time, they can do it mentally and do, do more repetitions. Uh, Gayatri can be helpful for increasing prana to also stabilize the emotions. And it is recommended um, in Indian tradition that the man chants Gayatri before conception. It's related also to the intelligence of the baby. They say that it can be helpful. Um, so it's important that both the mother and father to be are doing these kind of mantras as preparation. Then uh, the Durga mantras, the goddess mantras, especially for women, can help them to uh, be grateful for their femininity and to celebrate that. Uh, om chanting, of course, is going to be really helpful. And to get those effects, you want to have at least five minutes of Om chanting, ideally 15 to 20 minutes. Um, we'll have really good effects, especially if there's a lot of stress, um, a lot of problems, 
uh, are there on chanting will be really helpful. And then we have yoga nidra. So uh, yoga nidra, we can do specific types of yoga nidra. We can have yoga nidra um, specifically for women trying to conceive or men also um, that want to make themselves as healthy as possible. But also we can put yoga, we can have yoga nidra with specific visualizations in it that can be more helpful. So here I've written like remove tension, negative attitudes towards menstruation. So we can put things in that really celebrate um, a body, one's body, one's cycle. And then we have antamon, so the inner silence. So that can be very helpful to remove tension. But there are all sorts of meditations that can be done um, with really good effects. So looking at this last slide here, diet and lifestyle. So Many, many of these things we've already mentioned, having a good daily routine, a healthy lifestyle, so having good timings of sleep and eating and all that, making sure one's getting a lot of fresh air, fresh water, having regular exercise, but also having regular rest and relaxation. So a well-balanced life, looking at food, um, taking care to have a well-balanced diet. So... Here I write avoiding high protein diet, especially meat and dairy, which can be aggravating. So this especially can aggravate the cycle quite a lot. But uh, obviously here we're doing yoga. So we're going to say from the perspective of having a more sattvic diet, um, a whole food diet. Um, obviously a vegetarian diet is going to be really beneficial. Um, but especially trying not to have a lot of processed foods, so home cooked foods, uh, decreasing coffee and tea, there's large amounts of it as well. Um, making sure to have less processed foods, sugars, um, all those white, what we call white poison, you know, white sugar, white flour, white rice, um, and instead having the more whole food equivalents. Um, and having a lot of fresh fruit and vegetables obviously is really important as well. Uh, making sure to have enough uh, beta carotene. Uh, and then here I've put detoxification. So before trying to conceive, we can try to detoxify the body. So there's lots of different ways to do that. Um, it might be through juices. It might be through herbs. Some people do it through different supplements. Some people do um, fasting. And then what kind of fasting? So it can be pure water fasting. It can be um, juice fasting. It might be fruit and vegetable fasting. Um, and then, of course, there's lots of cleansing techniques that we can also do from the yogic perspective um, to detoxify the body. So particularly things like um, Lagu and Porna Shankar Prakshalans, the master cleanse or the partial cleanse um, can be really helpful for that. What is important is that this detoxification should not be done at the time of trying to conceive. It should be done before one tries. So this is where one has to hold off for those few months where one's uh, working and cleansing um, on oneself. Because if you're doing detoxification, lots of stuff can come out into the blood. And if she conceives and she's detoxifying, she can also miscarry. So it's important that she's done all that kind of detoxification and then tries to conceive. So having a few months um, just focusing on making oneself as healthy as possible. Then the next one is avoiding contraceptives like the pill that disrupt the natural cycle. So that is really important. And, you know, a lot of women who might come to you and say, oh, I want to get pregnant, you first have to check, are they on the pill? Because... If they are on the pill and they come off the pill, it can actually take a really long time for some women to have a normal cycle, um, sometimes years. And you think about some women have been on the contraceptive pill for a really long time. So they might have gone on the pill as a teenager, not for contraception, but because, you know, for some girls, they have really bad acne uh, or spots on their face. Or they might have really bad period pain, so the doctor puts them on the pill and then they're on it for like 10 years before they actually need it. <laughs> and then by that stage, when they decide that they want to come off it, they could have been on a really long time. 
So it can actually take a long time to get the menstrual cycle back into a really good rhythm and to have proper ovulation. Um, so that's an important point. Then taking time out for ourselves is also important. So time out for relaxation, for rest, um, to be with oneself. So there's lots of yogic practices that can help encourage that. Silence is a really good one. Meditation, um, many, many other practices are very helpful for that. Finding our role in life. So that also goes along with that time out. So understanding one's purpose and one direct, one's direction is also very helpful because a lot of people are very stressed because they're doing things that they're not really very happy about, but they don't really know what they want to be doing. And that is all having that effect on their mental health. So if one is starting to work on themselves and, and think about where they want to be heading, what they want to be gaining, what they want to do with their life, then it's going to make them feel more happy and balanced. There are lots of other techniques and practices that can be useful when one is planning to conceive or having any kind of problems. Uh, Counselling, hypnotherapy, uh, aromatherapy, herbal medicine. So herbal medicine from a Western herbal medicine perspective and also Ayurvedic perspective. So Ayurveda is of course having um, different types of herbs but also um, diet and other additional um, therapies. We've got acupuncture and acupressure, we've got different types of body work, different energetic medicine, there's so many different things that can be helpful. And the last point I want to say is not always thinking about conceiving because sometimes the couple just gets so stressed and anxious and trying um, that it just it just doesn't happen and you hear stories all the time where there's a couple they've been trying to conceive and it's just not happening so they just give up they go on holiday and they come back pregnant so it is really important to make sure that life is really well balanced Hurry on. <laughs>